Oh, good to see everybody again. We're um, back at it and uh, excited and, and ready for the opportunity that's in front of our basketball program. And had a really good summer and had a good preseason. Um, the foreign trip was fantastic for us in a lot of different ways. Obviously, the on-court stuff, but probably more importantly, the off-the-court you know, togetherness and bonding and trip and adventures and stories that we'll tell um, for a long time um, from some of those um, excursions that we were on. But um, yeah, we came back and, and we've been getting after it and we're really healthy and excited and motivated. Um, I think the goals and expectations, at least early, not necessarily within the program, but outside are a little different than maybe what they were a year ago when we sat here. And um, a year makes a big difference. There's no question just from a familiarity and kind of routine and, and, and understanding um, what's going on within the program. So we feel like we're in a really good place, um, certainly ahead of where we were a year ago at this time. Um, and just really, really excited for what's to come. Um, I think we're now 16 practices away from competing against somebody else. So it will come really, really quick for us at this point. So Mark, you said familiarity year two. I mean, you talk about it in terms of yourself, the comfort. And then also, I mean, JJ has been through three coaches in three years. So the players, how, how does it help them? How does it help you now that you're all together a second straight year? Yeah, I, I mean, just continuity is a great thing. I mean, we don't see that a bunch in, our, in college athletics right now. It, uh, there isn't a lot of continuity, and whether that's coaches or players or transfer portal and things like that. But when you can get continuity, I think uh, it just allows you to just grow um, exponentially and, and, and so much quicker and faster. And um, you asked about JJ, and I thought you know she had a fantastic year. Um, she's got some new goals for herself, and obviously we do as a team that, that I think she can achieve. And typically, I think the more comfortable you get, I use the term playing free of mind I think it allows you to slow your mind and react a little bit more and I think in sport when you can do that is when you can ultimately be at your best so hopefully JJ and the rest of the crew that's been here um, feel that way um, really same thing for me just in my day-to-day -day life or walking in here with you guys and seeing familiar faces it's a little different now than it was a year ago and uh, you guys aren't so bad after all uh, but uh, <laughs> but um, no it's just I just yeah yeah right um, but you're just yeah just that comfortability is just uh, it just makes things a little bit easier from where you left off from Iowa to today more of the same or some new well, new. Um, I think we want to build off of that and not whether that's just the, the way the season ended. And, you know, I think there was the disappointment. There was the excitement. There was obviously a lot of eyes on that game. Um, the majority of people talk about that game when you're traveling throughout the summer is there was just a lot of people that watched that. Um, and, and so we got some, you know, some notoriety from it, but we want to build off of it. Um, I think we have a core group back. Four of our five starters are back. Six of our top eight. I think it's I don't know, 70 some odd percent of our scoring is back, you know, those types of things. So you're sitting here as a coach knowing what you kind of have. And then we're still waiting on some separation with some other kids. And we told them that yesterday that over the next four to six weeks is it's separation time for some of them. And, uh, you know, ultimately, I think players determine playing time. I know I get the final decision, but I do think players determine that and kind of how they go about their business and their daily life and what they do on the court. And um, I think we have some talent and I think we're a little deeper um, than we were a year ago. We're a little we got some height, so we got some length that we didn't have a, a year ago. So hopefully we've addressed some of the issues um, that, you know, that we knew were some weaknesses and uh, continue to maximize on some of our strengths. One more here. Uh, is it harder to make something good better or something bad good? Um, uh, that's a good question. I, I think it's really, really hard to get there, but I do think it's harder to stay. So I know I don't know that I answered it exactly the way you asked it, but I know when you're climbing the mountain, that's really, really hard, but staying up there is maybe even a little more difficult. Um, but you got to get there first, and that climb's not easy. It wasn't easy a year ago. By no means are we at the top, but I think we're in a better spot up the mountain now than where we were a year ago at this time. How about the pieces that, that you put around what you've already got? Yeah, uh, no, we like them. Um, again, you're just we're gonna have, I guess, more options this year. If you, heaven forbid, have an injury or foul trouble, things like that, I think there's just more opportunity to play more depth, um, which is good for us and the way we play. We would like to be a little deeper than we were a year ago. Um, rest some of the kids, even if it's practice reps, just having more bodies. We have a roster of 14, so you're, you've got plenty of subs, two guard subs essentially, and two posts on each team. Um, so yeah, that, that will be a good thing um, for us for sure, but a, a solid group and we're still working through all the roles and we don't have to define those yet, but we are getting a little bit closer. Coach, when did your guys' first practice, like when did the clock kind of start? Uh, yeah, yesterday was our first practice. Yep. Thirty practices. Is that thirty and forty-two days? 30 and 42, okay. 
Yeah, so this will be practice number two. So Chris, did, um, Chris mentioned something uh, to me yesterday. You got how many players back with 200 or more steals? Because you added some there with the players you got returning and what you brought in. You may have uh, the, the largest collection of thieves in college <laughs> basketball. Yeah. Um, Is that intentional? Well, a little bit, of course. I mean, that's, it's what we do, and it's the way we played. And we had the top four steals leaders in the Big 12 a year ago. Um, you know, and, and three of those are back. And, you know, we've added some kids that can do it. Um, you know, some we like we got a bunch of kids that will take charges now. We did charge drill yesterday, and it looked like we actually had some kids that knew how to take some charges. Um, you know, so it won't just be Jordan Harrison show. Um, but, yeah, no, there's – Versatility is, is a term I use a lot in, in recruiting and having a roster. I think as a coach, you get to have more fun, I guess, with the more versatile the players are. You can put them in different positions, more positions to have success. So, you know, maybe a little more versatility, like I said, a little more size. Uh, we obviously didn't rebound it very well, so that was one thing we definitely needed to kind of hit home on. Um, I can't remember if we've talked about this in here or not, but we went back and studied some of the top offenses in the country and what made them so elite. And a couple of things that we found that were interesting of the top 15 offenses in the country a year ago in women's basketball, eight and a half threes was the average made per game. And we were at about 7.1. So you're talking about, about what, four and a half points a game. We averaged about four more possessions than those top 15 teams. So we didn't shoot it as well, didn't make quite as many threes. We know we had a rebounding issue that we needed to get cleaned up. And so, you know, those were things that we kind of focused on. Some of it might be personnel. Some of it may just be, you know, how we play. Maybe we want more possessions. Maybe it's the quality of shot that we need to get the better shot so we can shoot it at a higher percentage to just be a little bit more efficient. Um, but we were, what, like top five or six or whatever it was in the country defensively, but top 40, I think, or maybe 40. 45th in the country in offense. So we also had looked up all the national champions over the last so many years. And if I remember correctly, it was like every one of them had a top 30 offense or 30 defense. Maybe there was one team in there that didn't have one of them. But for the most part, they were elite offensively and defensively. And so we were just a little behind on the offensive end, certainly there on the defensive end. So we don't want to lose all that defensive identity, but we do have to get a little bit better offensively. Can you squeeze more points out of transition, in, particularly from your defense? I thought yeah. you said it was a little lacking last year. Um, well, no, we were okay in transition, um, but we do need we just need to finish in general at a higher rate. So whether that was in transition in the half court as the game's slow late in the year, you know, maybe we can try to pick up pace still, you know, even late in the year. But you know, as the year goes on and you get to the postseason, possessions tend to to decrease. They don't typically increase, and um, you know, I don't know if that was a benefit to us as much or not. So just stuff that we've evaluated, we're still working on, um, but we do need to probably play it a little bit faster clip offensively, but we can do that, I think, too, because we have a little more depth. Sounds like that was one hell of a research project. We had some time on our hands, uh, but I think that's what you do. You know, you're just trying to find how do you get better? Like, what's the next step for us? And, man, it was such a good year, but it wasn't, you know, ultimately what we wanted. And, you know, we had a good idea of what was coming back to, which allowed us a little bit to we kind of knew what the roster would look like. Um, obviously, the foreign trip helped, too, because now we've seen some eyes on these new kids. So it allowed us to kind of dive into the, the analytics a little bit deeper. Working on that yeah, it was a little bit of everybody. Yeah, yeah we had a that was a it was a full full staff yeah. project. Go ahead, um, JJ's been so good for so long, but would you ask her to improve on? Can she improve? Where can she improve? Yeah, oh yeah, I know. And she's always, I mean, JJ wants to be coach. She wants to set those goals. Um, you know, I think her term was she wants to become an elite three point shooter. I think she was around 34% a year ago. So we've challenged her to get into the high 30s, low 40s to be elite. I think you need to get into that category. Um, to get the shot off a little bit quicker was one of her goals. Um, she still wants to be the all-time steals leader. Now she's going to have to heck a going to have to have a heck of a, a season on that end because I think she's 120-ish, I want to say, um, away, and she had like 97 or 98 a year ago. So she's got a little work to do there, um, but that was one of her goals. So, you know, it was still, you know, shooting the three. Um, she, she got much more efficient at mid-range. That was one of the things two years ago or a year ago when I got here that we wanted her um, – to be a little bit better at that level, um, you know, still finishing at she finished at a pretty good clip, especially for a smaller guard. But I think she could probably take that to another level. Um, and then it's that assist to turnover ratio is one of the ones that that stood out. We've got to get that kind of flipped a little bit the other way. And then the last one was to limit the fouling. She I was uh, talking to an old guys coach last week, and I asked Darren this yesterday. I asked you. He said when he was here, he never had the top three players in the conference, but players. Seven, eight, nine, ten were. 
is that maybe your team, your top ten is better than their top ten as opposed to your top three better than their top three? Well, I, I, yeah, I hope so, or maybe both. <laughs> In the ideal world, that your top three are as good as anybody, and then seven, eight, nine, ten are better than most. Um, I think some of the better teams I've coached over the year, though, is our backups, the kids that came off the bench were – as good as other teams starters and I think that's when you've got it you know so there is no let up or you make some substitutions and you just kind of keep clicking um you know and, and so I think this year we will have some of that depth where there may be a whole second unit out there at times that you feel pretty good about and oh look they can hold their own or they can extend this lead um a little bit and so you know are, are we all the way there to 10 yet I'm not sure I think we're probably pretty dang close um, you know, but we do feel good about, you know, just having some options and that versatility that we just didn't have a year ago. Coach, uh, last year, boy, I mean, you've, you've kind of talked, mentioned it already, the, the difference a year makes. Uh, last year, the storyline was, oh, this is kind of feel-good team climbing up the mountain. Obviously, the expectations are a lot different this year. Is there a change in mindset that you talk about with the players in, in that instance, or is it just something you yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I, I don't really – I I, I like the kind of, I don't know, chip on your shoulder for lack of a better word. I just – I think that – I think that's a lot of us here. It sounds like that's some of West Virginia in the past. It's the way that it's the state's looked at, and I don't want to lose that. Um, but at the same time, I want them to feel like, oh, and they've worked their you-know-what's off to have some of these expectations. We don't want to shy away from that. We want to talk about those things, um, you know, but – Let's set the goals, which we actually will have a retreat this weekend that will set all of our kind of team goals and things like that. But, you know, I, I think you can have a really good year and you set some goals and you don't achieve them. Are you supposed to be disappointed in that? But you had a better year, so I'm always a little hesitant on some of those team goals. Um, but, no, I think we're still going to play that way. Um, you know, I, I, from talking to coaches throughout the summer, there's, you know, I think there's a thought from other coaches that they think we're going to be – pretty talented and we have these returners and we'll see, you know, so-and-so is going to vote for you, you know, first in your league. So when you get that one little first place vote, I want you to know it's coming from me, you know, and some of it's probably coach speak, you know, a little bit as well, you know, but no, I think, I think we've earned that right. But at the same time, I don't, we haven't achieved anything at, you know, at the level that we want to in our program. I do know we want to get to a sweet 16 and further. Um, I know in women's basketball, I don't think we've ever won two postseason games in an NCAA tournament. I think they went to a sweet 16, but it was a one, one win to get there. Yeah. 48. So, you know, like that's a goal. That's, I've heard them talk about that and we'll talk about it again this weekend. So I, I mean, there's things like that. Like we want to go down as the best team that's ever played here. Um, you know, for women's basketball. And, and we're okay talking like that, but I still think at the same time we need to keep the chip on our shoulder and understand that that's a, it's, a, it's a lot to ask. And if you want to be great, we better do something special every day and be better than, than we were a year ago and, and, and certainly the day before. Yeah, I mean, that's the follow-up. Is it harder to push that chip on a shoulder kind of atmosphere when, you know, when you're already ranked in the top, you know, 15 or whatever you're picked? second or third or first or I mean I don't, I don't think it is I, we haven't gone through that with this group so that will be something new for us and we'll probably have to talk about that a little bit but we've never even a year ago when we were ranked for those eight or nine weeks it wasn't after the first one yeah. maybe the second one like we don't it wasn't uh, we didn't go celebrate it every week, and we didn't really even go talk about it very much. When you get in there the first time, I think it's it's reason to celebrate, and then after that, it's no, oh, we're back to business, and let's see what you know. Let's continue to grow it, but let, you know, the goal still is to be the best basketball team that we can possibly be. Like that's still the goal. Like I want to pull everything out of them that I possibly can. Um, a year ago, we felt like we got about as much out of that group as we possibly could. And as a coach, that's that's pretty satisfying. And then I want to do the same thing with this group. Um, I want to pull everything I can out of them. I want to put them in the best situations to have success. I think you have to have the personnel to help you do that, of course, um, in coaching. But we feel pretty good about that um, as well. I saw Bracketology had you fourth going into the season. Do you take that, or do you push that back in the table and say, Take my chances. Yeah, well, I, honestly, again, I think my son's the one that pointed that one out, yeah. so I hadn't seen that. We have not mentioned that in any way, shape, or form. So other than that and then you bringing it up, I hadn't even given that much thought. Other though than, you know, when we left Iowa a year ago, that's what I said. If this is the rules of, you know, women's college basketball and that these top four seeds are going to get these home games, then that needs to be our goal. Um, and so, again, we may talk about that this weekend, and that might come up. But, um, I, yeah, that, I, th I want that to be a goal. 
I want to be a top 16 team. I want to be a top four seed where you get to host. And um, I think the environment in Morgantown, West Virginia, would be pretty special if we were hosting one of those first two round games here. Well, Iowa, the Iowa game we brought up uh, here. Uh, it's a long way from your last job to being sitting in that, in that atmosphere and that. Uh, obviously, the college game's changed since you left, changed your opposite game here. Uh, how do, you, how do you keep the momentum going in college in women's college basketball now that it's there? You've got the ball rolling. And, and how did, did that game affect your team as far as what it can be? Yeah, well, I, I think you just, yeah, we, we, you roll with momentum. I, momentum is scary in sports. That's what we talk about all the time, right? It can be a dangerous thing either way. But, you know, I think the Caitlin Clarks and Angel Reese's and all those other players that now aren't a part of it certainly laid the, the footprint and the blueprint. And, and uh, I think there is an excitement. People are talking about it. We're watching it at an all-time you know, record high. Um, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Our, sick, our season ticket sales are already, I think, considerably more than what they were a year ago. So I think we're in a good in a good spot. And I think our, our passionate fan base is, is going to continue to rally around our program. So you just, yeah, we want to keep the momentum and you want to keep moving forward. I want our kids to keep working so we can continue to grow it here in this state. And, you know, we had, I think, three times as many kids at our camp this summer than we did a year ago. So that always tells you a little something that kids are excited and families are excited to be around um, the program. Um, you know, I think we've raised more money already this year than we had last year. So I just think there's a lot going on. And, and when you get numbers like that, you, you realize that the, our momentum is great and uh, it is across the country, but certainly here. And the more we can capitalize on it, the, the better. So you, besides the returners you have, and you have a lot of them, you are bringing in a number of new farmers. So give us a little look. I mean, start with the girls that were hurt and had to sit out last year. What, two Sydneys? And just give us a quick look at all, all the new Facing. Yeah, so Zaya Nugent sat out a year ago. Um, Zaya had come with came with me from Stephen F. Austin. She was back to back season ending injuries actually the year before um, had an injury and then again the last conditioning drill of of last fall. So she had her one year anniversary of that and got through it. And we were at conditioning again that day, and so she survived that one. So she's still working through and trying to get in game shape and get back to the player that she was. Um, but she was like the WAC tournament MVP. You know, she had 24, 25 on North Carolina and NCAA tournament. So I've seen the kid play at a high level, and we just need to get her back there. Um, a Shayla Mosbury was the transfer from BYU. Kid can really shoot it, athletic, um, fits the steals. You won't, the numbers may not say it, but we keep deflections every day in practice. And like yesterday, she had the most deflections in practice. So she fits um, ability to shoot it and still defend it at the level. Um, and then really, it's a lot of new kids, um, everybody else, what you would have known. Um, Sydney Shaw came in from Auburn. She actually led us in scoring over in Europe. Um, and played really, really well. Um, she's been our best shooter through all of our drills and the, the numbers that we keep throughout the summer and the, and the preseason. So I expect her to probably have an immediate impact. Um, Sydney Woodley came from Long Beach State, another defender length. She actually had like 100 plus steals a year ago at Long Beach State. Um, so just getting her up to the speed and, uh, of this level um, will be her, her challenge right now. Um, I don't want to forget people. Um, CC Celia came from Northwest Florida, junior college post player who had a really, really good career there. She's from France originally. Didn't get to play in Europe, just some NCAA stuff that we couldn't quite get all the way through. But she'll, I imagine she'll have a role on this team. Um, Jordan Thomas is a freshman post player um, who played really well um, in Europe. Uh, maybe it was like our second or third leading scorer in Europe. Um, but yeah, it was a top 100 recruit. Um, and has been really good for us. Another one that just brings some size, like with Danelle. So now we've got a couple of them that, that can really bang and battle. Um, Destiny Agabata came and graduated early. So she was here in the spring, but didn't get to play. Um, so she's much further ahead. I, I reminded her the other day, or I needed to remind myself that she still never played in a college basketball game, even though she's been with us now for a long time and, and, and played in Europe. Um, see, Defna came in from Turkey late, so she was the latest addition that was not a part of the European trip. So she's only been here about a month now and really um, high IQ. She's a skilled kind of forward, um, you know, as you would maybe more of a typical European kind of post player, can shoot the three, step out, can pass it a little bit. Again, hadn't been on a huge weight program or anything over there, so it's going to be a strength, um, you know, speed type. Just that we need to close that gap. Um, and then who am I missing? Is that it? Yeah. So, I mean, with this depth, I mean, you didn't have depth necessarily last year. 
can you see yourself going 10, 11? I mean, what, what do you – do you even have that right now? In yeah, well, you no, know, I always want to go 10. 10 the number for sure. That's the magic number, the, the way we play. Last year didn't happen very often. Um, so, you know, yeah, it could be 11 or more depending on, I guess, the game or the situation or the score. But um, in the ideal world, it's 10 night in and night out. Um, now, if you're going to ask me who those 10 are, that's the piece we're still trying to work through. And that's where I want some of that separation because I want – some of these players to help define those roles for me. Um, I'll figure it out or we'll figure it out if we need to. And I'm sure time will help that. But yeah, we're still working through that. But a 10 would be great. You were going to face Ioka Lee for the 15th year. She's like a 15 year veteran at Kansas State. She is, yeah. She'll be back. And uh, she's very, very talented. And uh, it's kind of like, well, I think I saw it was a, Oklahoma State played somebody in football the other day. And it was like a seventh. Seventh and eighth year quarterback playing against each other, or something like that. So yeah, there may be a few of those in Big Twelve women's basketball as well. Finally, get through the COVID stuff. Though. I think that cycling through should be the last year of it. So unless there's a rare circumstance. Mark, do you have certain benchmarks through the course of the preseason when it comes to evaluating players, potential lineups? Do you have like at this point, I want to be here prior to the first preseason game. I want to be here. Yeah, we do, and I always work work it backwards. So you go back from we have one of those closed scrimmages on the 18th um, of October. So I work back from from that date, um, you know. And so whether we're working on man stuff, zone stuff, press stuff, so we have those, yeah, kind of, you know, points that we need to get stuff in by. Um, you know, I, I like to scrimmage a lot on Saturday practices, so it kind of gives you a week to work on some things, and then let's go play live against each other and get it on film and evaluate it and give kids opportunities to kind of showcase to create some of that separation. So um, that's kind of begun, and that will start this week. With uh, We'll end the week with one of those and then our team retreat, and then it's kind of like we've set the stage at that point, and, um, you know, we'll continue to flow. Um, we'll always adjust as needed, but, yeah, there's always a – Coach Kellogg has a plan usually, and we'll adjust it, but I've been at it this year 20 as a head coach, so I feel like I've got a decent kind of plan on a timing and what we need to be. Do you think the new look Big 12 or the remade Big 12, obviously a couple out, four more in, and do you have your schedule yet? I know it hadn't been released publicly. It's tomorrow. Is it coming out tomorrow? I have heard it. It does. Uh, I have seen it. Uh, it does get released tomorrow. Um, yeah, no, we in women's basketball, we're getting four really, really good programs three of which were NCAA tournament teams a year ago and so Utah has been fantastic Colorado was in the sweet 16 played Iowa the next round after us um, Arizona has been historically really good and obviously played in a national championship several years ago um, Arizona State's I think working through some things but but you know they got a really they got their best player back she was hurt a year ago and I think that kind of hurt them so they're going to work through it as well so travel will be a little different uh, we'll, are we all four time zones I guess maybe depending on the Arizona's and yeah. there so yeah, that time of year. So um, you know, they'll it'll it'll be a little bit different, but some new venues. So that's that's exciting. Also, um, you know, some of the returning teams that we already know about, I think, have loaded up. Um, you know, some of the new teams from a year ago seem to be much improved. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle. Eighteen, right? You play eighteen this year, right? Just curious. Um, obviously, the schedule comes out tomorrow, but do you? This is a tweaking deal there when you try to incorporate all these different schools from different areas. But do you feel like maybe build it off a of geography and then expand out? So in other words, you play uh, the, the close people and then branch out. Do you feel that's probably the best way to go moving forward? Uh, yeah, that, that'd be ideal. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know that we're there yet. And, you know, for us, geography, I mean, we get Cincinnati, which is our kind of one of our protected rivals in our sport. So, I mean, in Central Florida, at least you're on the Eastern time zone. Um, you know, but we play Oklahoma State, Colorado, and Cincinnati. That's our three, two plays, and then everybody else wants. Um, but yeah, I think in the ideal world, it would be that. I don't know if you could build in like a little pod system where you play your like four or five local, you play them all twice, and then branch to everybody else maybe once to keep it a little bit more regional and keep some of those regional rivalries. Um, but again, the Big 12, it's so spread out now. I don't know if that's completely plausible, but in theory, it sounds perfect. Yeah. Uh, uh, college women's basketball, again, uh, traditionally there's been a dominant dynasty, you know, Gino, uh, Pat Summit, uh, uh, you know, on and on and on, on. Has the talent level reached the point that it's going to even out now? And, and schools like West Virginia are going to have a chance to win a national championship? And, and that. 
Well, I think we're closer now than we ever have been. Yeah, there's much more parity to this, to women's basketball than, than there was several years ago. I still think you have some of the dominance, the South Carolinas, and of course, Geno still, and what Mulkey's done, and there's several more. Um, you know, some of the West Coast schools now are, are creeping up to, and, and some of the talent's going all over. So, um, yeah, I think we're closer than we've ever been. I don't know if we're completely there yet. Um, you know, when we get to neutral floors, too, for the first two rounds, like that'll tell you that maybe we're a little bit closer um, you know, uh, it's okay playing at these home sites and we need the crowds. If we can get neutral though and really draw, um, then I think now we've probably really made it in women's basketball, but we are certainly closer right now than we've ever been. To Bob's question, are the 25 best kids still going to the same places? And is there a, a closer, uh, as, as the 26 through 50 close the gap to the top 25 kids? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, the amount of skill training, athleticism, size is now stretched much further than it used to be with just those top five or 10 kids in the country. And they were all basically going to the same places. So I think it's still spaced out. I think, you know, some leagues, you know, they're still going to the power conferences. Um, where do they go? How much does NIL come into play? Transfer portal? That's the stuff I think we're still trying to work through. Um, but again, I think it's more spread out now and there's more opportunity um, at some of the other schools. You may not have to have the top 10 kid in the country, the top 20, 30, 40, 50 kid in the country is just maybe as talented. And they've played against each other now. Now you got all these showcases all throughout the country. So these kids know each other. I mean, very, I mean, we get recruits in here and they know every other kid we're recruiting and they know their families and they'll pull out a picture that there was four of them on the same team as, you know, 12 year olds. And like, you knew them, well, you live here and they live across the oh no we met up in you know the midwest and they were all on the same team and so um i just think we're getting a lot of that and exposure and training and those types of things that have you know probably leveled the playing field some so to speak if you look at last year uh jordan and jj were the go-to guys uh, lauren kaya kind of filled in with sydney i don't know if she's a fill-in guy where i think she could be more of an impact player. Do you, I mean, do you would agree with that? Or? As of now, yeah, I, she needs to be an impact type player for us. Um, what we've seen, uh, you know, so far says that that should be the case. So it just gives us another, just another threat um, on both ends. But this kid has been an elite shooter up to date. Um, plays with some swagger too about her. Um, she's playing freely right now. That's something that if you asked her when you get up get her up here one day you can you know just ask but that's kind of what she's talked about a lot since she's here is just it's a you know freed her up uh, her mind just to kind of go let loose a little bit and and we just try to teach her which shots to take the right ones. she has the green light early on she was looking back she was taking some bad ones and I was letting her know they were bad and so you know she's looking over her shoulder but <laughs> we've gotten past that where now I think she's playing really um, uh, the best she's ever played. I think she would probably tell you that. But we need her to play at an elite level. We need to take some of the pressure off of Jordan and JJ offensively. Well, I was going to say, I mean, how much does that change, like maybe how other teams approach you guys now and, and, and maybe, maybe change like, like a JJ where she doesn't feel like she has to go out and score 22 points every night for the team to be successful? Maybe that's not the case anymore. I mean, how does yeah. that do Well, it? I think it's one of those where if JJ is in foul trouble or she's not shooting it very well that night that now we have – you know, somebody else that we can rely on. Um, you know, Jordan Harrison out of high school was really a pass first kid. I mean, she wants to pass first by nature. Um, we just had to have her score. My first year at SFA, I needed her to score. And then obviously here a year ago, we needed her to score a little bit also. So, you know, Jordan may be able to take a back seat a little bit from the scoring role and now really get back to facilitate facilitator. Kaya's actually been really good and looking to score a little bit more than she was a year ago because she kind of would you know, fall by the wayside. I thought some on the offensive end. So she's been much more aggressive. We know Kylie can shoot it and score it. We'll have a little more size on the inside. So I just think you're going to get, we're going to get scoring punches in a few different places than we probably did last year. And the other impression I got from just from looking at the stats and stuff from, from your foreign trip with uh, Jordan and Destiny, I, I know coaches maybe try to be conservative with freshmen sometimes not to get their egos built. But there seems to be something there with those two. As yeah, we, we think so. And, and we've seen it with our own eyes already. Um, you know, and both of those kids were, you know, highly recruited, I guess, top 100 type kids out of high school. So they've played on elite teams and played at the high level. And um, their transition has been, yeah, 
pretty good so far. Uh, you know, I still think their first semester freshman year is uh, so much peaks and valleys. They'll have a good practice and then maybe not such a good one. And we want to flatline that thing sooner rather than later. So I still think they're going through some of those ups and downs as freshmen do, but they will have roles on this team and they will be significant. You covered more field this year than last year, I guess. We covered what? You're, you're covered. Oh, yeah, yeah. covered. Covered yeah, is filled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The covered is definitely more full than it was yeah. yeah, a year ago. And, yeah, we made the best of it, and those were great players. And Lauren and Jayla and all of them, Tabby, those kids were, were fantastic for us and certainly laid the foundation. And, um, you know, we, we got to kind of just really figure out what, what we needed, what we could work with. Um, you know, we took a step. We're still not quite where we need to be ultimately, but we're, we're, we're closer. Can you get what you – got last year from Fields defensively from the new players you brought in? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Lauren was elite. I mean, that girl was, and we show clips to players when they come in, and she's guarding Kate and Clark and doing some of the stuff that she did in some of those games. I mean, Lauren, it would be, those will be hard shoes to fill. We, you know, I don't know that we quite have that. Um, you know, so we'll have to make it up in some other areas just because Lauren and Jayla were that good on the defensive end. Um, you know, but yeah, I think we've got opportunity to still be, be quality defensive team. You're gonna head out soon, but um, did you say this is your 20th season as a head coach? It is, yeah. This wow. is number 20. That's awesome. You we, saying I look young or? Yeah, you look oh, young. Okay. You look very young. I thought you were like telling me there's no way that I could be uh, year 20. <laughs> yeah. Let me. If I turn around, you might see the bald spot, and then you might disagree. But uh, from the front side, maybe not too bad. When you look back on your whole career, how has your coaching philosophy evolved, and what has changed the same over these last 20 years? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, well, quite a bit, but the the players have changed a lot too, and and how we coach, and you know the types of kids we're coaching a little bit too. Um, but I went from I was a Division two coach for ten years, so this is year ten as a Division one coach. Um, you know, and so we started the, like the pressure wasn't like what we did. We were slow you down. We didn't have enough bodies. We're just trying to take time off the shot clock, and then we started to get more athletic early in my career at Fort Lewis College, and. You know, and got fortunate to really start to have some success. So I think what stayed the same is the big picture, the goal, the way we play, the structure in which we build practices, the preparation all stays pretty much the same. And I've always wanted to lead through consistency. That's something that it, that's been really important to me. So I've tried to be that guy all the way through. But you get older and then I have my own kids and you kind of mellow out a little bit early on. I was probably too animated and lived off every possession and every win or loss. And it, it probably, not that it meant more because they still mean a ton but I was probably a little bit able more able now to kind of relate a little bit and I think my probably families and having kids and those types of things life has changed and so I look at it through a different lens than I did back then but you know the coaching is coaching and I'm still as competitive as ever and I still think the process is the same and I love that I love going to practice I love competing um, when I don't love it that's when I know it'll be time to go do something else but for now I'm loving every second of it Better players make you a better coach? Yeah, probably. They make you look better. I don't know if I'm a, technically a better coach. I always think, yeah, you win. Or, you know, I always said this, like when you're the mid-major coach, all of a sudden I made some NCAA tournaments and I was like, I became this great coach. But the year before, we just played bad on the wrong night and I wasn't a very good coach, you know. And so that part's always been kind of crazy um, to me. But, yeah, certainly good players make you look a little better. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks, guys.